Good morning. Uh, good morning. I'm Dr. Andres. This is my assistant, Madison. Our patient today is Zena, a nine-month-old female spade mastiff. Um, she's going to have a short procedure today, so we'll be putting an intravenous catheter. So we thought we'd go over how to how I place an intravenous catheter. Um, before we actually put it in, I just wanted to go over some uh, some of the equipment and instruments and supplies that we need uh, because that's always key having all your supplies ready before you go. So what I do mentally is I just walk through the the supplies that I'm going to need and that's how I pull them out. You can have a checklist as well, especially when you're starting off. Uh, so we have. 20 gauge intravenous catheter. We have a T port. I have some one inch white porous tape. Uh, some vet wrap, uh, bandage scissors. I have some uh, dry gauze and I have some gauze with peroxide in case we need to do some cleanup. We have our chlorhexidine scrub and then our alcohol soaked uh, gauze sponges. And then some saline flush. You could use heparinized saline or just um, sterile 0.9% sodium chloride, which I prefer. Uh, I always prefer not to heparinize my patients before we do any type of surgery. Um, so I'm always worried about that, especially with smaller patients. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my intravenous catheter, okay? And I'm gonna pull off, this is called the filter cap. I'm just gonna pull this off in a sterile fashion, okay? I'm just gonna set it aside right there so it's not touched and I'm going to go ahead and flush the catheter okay with the sterile saline okay. okay and I'm going to actually just pull out the catheter not all the way well I will take it out of the sheet and I'm just going to make sure that the catheter itself is loose okay I'm going to put this back in okay and I'm going to set it inside the sterile bag that it comes in. Okay, just going to set it aside right there, so it's ready to go. I personally don't like to leave uh, the cap in or put a plug in, just because I feel that there's more resistance to blood flow. So I just prefer that there's no resistance at all. So with the T port, I'm going to do the same thing. Going to open it. I'm going to pull off the white cap or the blue cap. Just going to flush it. I'm just flushing it with saline. I'm going to put the blue cap back in. Okay, screw it back on. And then I'll set it aside over here. Okay, and I'll recap my needle. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do mentally is I would go over the pieces of tape that I need, and every technician tapes catheters differently. Uh, every doctor tapes in catheters differently. Uh, but we're all aiming for the same goals, that's to do it as aseptically as possible um, using sterile technique. Now you could use gloves to do all this, that would probably theoretically be the best way to do it, but it is really difficult to deal with tape when you have gloves on. And most technicians I see do this and doctors aren't going to use gloves. Okay, I pull a strip out that's about two and a half times the circumference of the limb. I prefer to take more tape out than less because I can always cut it shorter. Okay, and I'll put it right there on my overhead light. I think that's a convenient place to put it. Although you could put it on the table or somewhere else. I just don't like it touching anything uh, on the table or picking up hairs. Okay, I'm going to cut another strip that's about a similar length. And then I'm going to tear it in half so I have about a half inch strip on each side. Put one on that side. Then I'm going to take this last strip and maybe just tear off a third of it. Like that. Put this one over here. And then this one, I'm just going to twist the middle, make it into a thin bow tie, so to speak. Okay, this will be what secures the T port later. And I'll just put that there where it can stick conveniently. All right, so now I'm just going to prep this area. We've already clipped the area. Okay, so my assistant Madison here is just going to hold off. As a big girl. Okay, we're going to start by starting in the middle, work your way outward, okay, in a circle. You do not go back to the center, okay. I'm going to follow that up with the alcohol. 
Okay, sometimes if I feel there's debris or hairs or anything else, uh, I may just soak the whole area like this with alcohol just to wash off some of the loose hairs. Okay. Whenever you feel like you've gotten a clean start, then you can count your three scrubs and three wipes. Again, you could do this with gloves. Zena has been <coughs> premedicated, and so she's a very rambunctious dog. alcohol wipe on this one. And one last scrub. I'm just going to wipe the side with some alcohol here. Okay. Uh, let me just try my hand real quick. You can pause it if you want. Oh, here we go. So I do cut a piece of vet wrap uh, that's about one and a half times the circumference of the limb, approximate. And on one of the ends I'll leave about uh, two or three centimeters and I'll cut it right down to about three-fourths the length like that. Okay? We'll use this at the very end, so I'm going to set this aside over here. Okay? So we're ready to start our IV catheterization. Let's see if we can... So in her case, she has pigmented skin. Uh, I can kind of see where the cephalic vein is, um, even though she has pigmented skin. So it's, it's right about there. Okay, so that's where I'm going to try to insert the catheter. Okay, you always want to go bevel up. Okay, so in my mind, what I do is I try to envision giving an intravenous injection with a needle, and that's about how deep you want to go with your uh, stylet when you insert it so you don't just insert it superficially or all the way to the hub you just insert it as deep as you think you would for an intravenous injection and then if you get a flashback uh, then you can feed it in okay so we're going to go right about there get a flashback in the flashback chamber I'm going to insert the uh, catheter there so then I'll grab the here's the filter cap that we had initially I'll put it there Madison's going to continue holding on to that. Then I'm going to grab my half inch strip up here, Izumi. This is my half inch strip of white tape. And notice we're doing this over the edge of the table. That way the tape hangs all the way down. Doesn't touch the table, pick up hairs, or any other debris. I'm going to put my thumb over the cap. Uh, you can hold the limb now if you want. I'll, I'll take over with the catheter. Okay. I'm going to set the hub of the catheter down over the tape. Sticky side is up. I'm just going to move this over to my left. And again, I do this over the edge of the table because as you can see, the tape down here is just hanging. It doesn't pick up any debris. And now I try to tape it with enough tension so the catheter stays lined up with the vein. And so the first wrap, I go right around the hub okay? because I want the tape to grab as much of the hub as possible. This part that narrows is sometimes so narrow that the tape doesn't grab all of it. So that's that's going to be my securing layer. And then I'm going to go around as if I'm bandaging, just covering half the width of the previous strip. Okay, I don't put any courtesy tabs at this point because it's rare for us to have to remove tape all the way down to this level. And most of the time we're removing catheters using bandage scissors anyways. Uh, so I will put a courtesy tab on the very top layer. 
So I will mold it down like this to make sure that the tape is adhered to the catheter. Okay. Then I'm going to take my one inch tape and I don't I don't make any other um, tears on this tape. I'm going to put it sticky side down, leaving about four or five centimeters on my left side. I'm going to I'm going to sort of um, orient this cranially so that there's a slight um, bend in the tape so that when I go around it's right over the hub of the cap catheter like that okay and then I go around again halfway as if I'm bandaging okay and right about there and then again I'll mold it so this essentially is what holds down the catheter okay and notice I didn't put the T-port on initially uh, you could there's nothing wrong with that but I prefer not to because it always gets in the way of your taping and you're constantly trying to move uh, the rest of the T-port around to adjust so I don't I don't put the T-port in until this point um, so we'll take our T-port and I like to put the pinch clamp right in the middle I've already pre uh, I put saline in here already so it's so it's flushed okay and now what we'll do is I'm going to have Madison hold off the vein again so that it doesn't the blood doesn't start to flow out. I can remove this filter cap right off. Okay, I'm going to take the cap off the T-port, put the T-port in there. Okay. And I I actually we want to orient the T-port medially like that. Okay. Um, and I'll show you why in a minute. But all right, the T-port medially. And so now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to tape the T-port in um, with the vet wrap just yet. I'm going to put this little, I call these bow ties, but this is what's going to hold onto the T-port. And you just cross that over. Okay. So the little bow tie you made, the twisty, is just so it could sit over the T-port part, the actual T. Okay. So now I'm going to take the vet wrap. Okay. Slide this underneath here like this. I'm gonna wrap this around just like that. Okay. Okay. Now what do we do with this T port? So you have a couple of options. If we're working on the face, let's say we're doing dentistry, I don't want I don't necessarily want the intravenous fluid line around the muzzle the whole time, it gets in your way of working. So I will orient this caudally like this. So I'll orient the T-port caudally like that so that the IV fluid line is oriented caudally and that way it's away from the face the whole time. But if I were doing a spay or neuter, then it doesn't matter if the intravenous line is, is on, you know, on this side because I'm working on the abdomen. So then you could orient it cranially like this and tape it in this way. Okay, you could tape it in this way. Okay. I'm going to tape it in facing caudally just because I, I do so many dentistries that that's the way I prefer. Um, so you'll take this last piece of half inch white tape. You're going to put it sticky side up right near the hub okay, of the port. Just like you would for the hub of the IV catheter. And I'm going to put it over the vet wrap just like this. Okay, I'm going to wrap it around. That. And for this, I will put a courtesy tab on there because this is something we may want to take off or adjust later. Now, I don't mind that this tubing stays out like this because that way I can actually see if the blood is backing up. It's not covered by bandage, bandaging material or vet wrap. Um, and it's just accessible for me. So I'm just going to confirm that the catheter is in. I was pretty confident when it went in because I saw the blood coming out with some force. So I'm just going to inject some saline and make sure. Madison can feel that the saline goes through the cephalic vein and if it's not in usually you'll get some resistance. I'm not getting any resistance at all. At all. It's pretty easy to inject the saline. Okay, and here you would uh, connect your IV administration set. I could have also taped this more laterally if I wanted to, you know, for whatever reason, depending on the position of this patient, but that's how, uh, that's how I put in intravenous catheters. Okay. Uh, so that's it. I hope you can practice this often. And like I said, no one has the same way of taping catheters in. It's very different. It's kind of like gift wrapping. Everyone has a slightly different way of doing it, but the objectives are the same that you do it 
uh, using aseptic technique or as much as possible that it stays in and it's secure.